Here we are at Backlit tonight. Um, hello to Northern Print, who are actually taking interest in what's going on. Uh, I just want to say how great it is to have Matt Collinshaw with us this evening and from everybody in the room, um, how pleased we are that we won the competition for Nottingham. What do you remember of Nottingham before you went off to Goldsmiths when you did your foundation in the town? What was Nottingham like in those days? I, I haven't been back enough now to know what the differences are, I think, so I, I don't know how it's changed so much over the 25 years since I've been here. But for me, I just remember I didn't really have a place when I was here, kind of. I had to go to school, which I didn't particularly like. I had to go to college, which I didn't particularly like. And then I went to Trent Polytechnic. It meant something to me. There wasn't like a whole bunch of essay writing to do. There wasn't too many lectures to be involved in. It was just kind of doing the stuff that I wanted to do. So from then on, I actually enjoyed being here. But that was just like a kind of um, springboard to go into London. Um, perhaps we should talk to Rebecca because we've had people uh, asking questions through social media network tonight and uh, I know we've got a few that want to be directed at, at Matt so yeah Rebecca? we've got one that's come through from Richard Prince books and he's asked was the work bullet hole your first choice for freeze and did you ever expect the response and longevity that it received um. Kind of freeze was an exhibition where we just kind of like this setup is all everybody just doing it for themselves. So you get a space, then you've got to put some work uh, in there. But I had a lot of the work that I had going on at the time was quite figurative work, pictures of people or things. And most of the other work in that exhibition were it was abstract work. They're like kind of monochrome paintings, monochrome sculptures, shapes that had no figurative reference to them. So that work didn't really. Uh, my other work didn't really fit in with that thing, whereas the bullet hole, which was a plan I'd have for doing for a while, it was an image of, although it was of a, a real thing, it was a figurative image of the hole on top of somebody's head. It looked kind of like an abstraction. It was like a, an aperture with hair radiating, radiating out from it. It was just a, kind of like a, a shape that you could forget that it was something. It could become abstract, so it kind of fitted in. But that particular work just finished up kind of rusting and rotting in a crate outside the show and eventually just disintegrated and disappeared so at the time it wasn't of interest or importance to anybody particularly i don't think in retrospect it kind of people say they went to the show and they thought the work was great but they probably didn't <laughs> very few people went to that show Hi, um, I just wanted to know if there was a memory um, when you realised the turning point of this, of you just being a poor artist and you actually, this being your career, was there kind of a moment that you thought, okay, I'm making money and this is going to be my career? Or, or was there that moment or has it just kind of evolved? It was the moment when Matthew from Backlit. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I've been struggling quite a lot for a long time, so I kind of, for me, it's always difficult when people say, come and give talk to, like, art students and that, because I generally wouldn't encourage anybody to do it, because unless you're quite lucky, which I think a lot of my generation were, it was, like, a, the right time and place for a significant amount of people, and it just fell into place. But for me, possibly because I work in so many different medias, it's difficult for people to get a grasp on what it is that I do. So it's like, what is he doing this? He's doing that. Forget about it. We'll go for the, the person that we know what it is they've got more of a defined brand but I always thought that it probably would be that way for me anyway so I thought I'd have to keep struggling on and up until last year it was still quite problematic and then I decided that maybe it might be a good idea to work with 
oil paint and canvas. And, and that was a show that I did in London a few months ago, and that's gone fairly well. People know what it is, they buy and they stick it on the wall and that's it. <coughs> Generally, if you make an artwork with a plug-in, your chances of selling it go down by at least ten times at that point because people, it, it's, it's it's complicated and it has it has obs built-in obsolescence, whereas other more traditional mediums are more kind of reliable and they're easier to sell basically. So now it's kind of okay for me, but nothing's really guaranteed in the uh, in the art situation. Anything could happen. Hi, welcome back. Um, just a warning that there is going to be some strobe lighting in the next section. I think it was a really good idea to have several different people working on the same one because the more elements you have going off in here, the more interesting it becomes. When it's just one character, it becomes very repetitive. But as soon as you've got a few more in, the relationship to them all is so complex, it's quite difficult to work out exactly what's going on, which is when it starts getting interesting. And it was really good that Matt suggested to sort of um, offset some of the sort of the loops, so it wasn't just um, every loop was the same. Great, well done. Mm -hmm. Shall we uh, try the next one? Yeah. This one may need a bit of reworking because the characters are quite good, so it'd be a shame if it didn't work. It puts you in a different world, doesn't it? It takes you to something a bit different than the right side, so you wake up. Um, I had got sort of origami skills, so I just thought um, it could be quite nice to make um, different sizes of cranes, and um, it's kind of like an exchange of cultures and things as well. For me, I didn't think it was going to work at all, and I was just going to ask them to start moving everything around again, because <laughs> it's not a traditional way of doing it. Generally, you would have the one thing going back and feeding into the same loop, whereas these are going into spiral flowers, and the, the, the cranes yes. going into a spiral. But it kind of works okay. It's like um, very pleasing to look at. Mm. Mm. Well done. Well, Jane, do you want to come around here so we can have a chat with you? <laughs> well, kind of like Matt's so trait with butterflies, I work with butterflies and make them out of paper. And so it's a perfect opportunity to kind of animate them. And Matt gave some good advice about thinking of where the wings are going to be when it's up in the air and when they're down. Um, and Deanne, I collaborated with their, her pieces in the centre. So we just wanted to see the different shadows and movements with the other objects that um, aren't animated and see how they look really against the two, the contrasting of the kind of natural form of the butterfly and then these irregular objects in the, in the centre. So hopefully it works. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've seen the stroboscope on what your thoughts now, it means Really yeah, thriving. I mean, I kind of I want to make more more stuff like different insects, bigger butterflies moving around. How Matt was saying, like things going left to right, dropping out, how they change. Yeah, and kind of it's given me um, yeah kind of ideas of what I can do. I mean, it's not very fair on you guys really because these things are not synced up at all really. The strobe is going to a different speed to actually how it's rotating. Like when you turn it backwards and forwards, they go forward or they go backwards. Mm -hmm. Which is how it should be, but you kind of get the general impression. It's quite nice how crude the whole thing is. So I think that brings us to the end of the workshop and the QA. Yeah. yeah, thank you all for watching. And of course, Matt Collishaw. Thank Big you. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.